In this video I'm going to show you how you can make a hex grid where you can click on tiles and they'll cycle colors. Okay, so I have a blank project here in Godot. I'm going to make a new node. This is going to be a tile map. So we're going to load in a texture here. I already have one ready. You can use it from the description or you can use your own. I have the hex grid loaded in. It's just this image. And we'll name this scene tile map, sure. With the tile map selected, we're going to make a new tile set. So new tile set. There's a few things that are a little bit hidden here. So to expand the tile set options, you have to click on where it says tile set. We want this shape here to be hexagon. Tile size 102 by 94. This is for the map that I'm using at least. And we want to make it vertical offset. So you'll see that opened a menu at the bottom here. So we have tile set and tile map. So in the tile set tab, drag your image over. And we do want to automatically create the atlas. So we want to change the default stuff a little bit. You can click and drag this with the middle mouse button. You can see it's currently trying to align in spots that our tiles are not. So let's fix that. So in the setup tab, you want to change some of these options here. So for margins, again, this is specifically for mine. We want 9 and 8. That's how much offset it is from the outside. So you can see, instead of trying to start the tile in the corner, starting with an offset. Separation is how far apart each of the tiles are. So you can see currently it thinks my hexagons are trying to be right next to each other, but we want this to be 18 instead. And for this part down here, we're going to make this 96 instead of 94. And this should be 110. Um, so we don't need these ones down here, so you can just right-click, say delete. If I want, I can add in this one here by just left-clicking. Okay, so now if we go to the Tile Map tab, with the Paint selected here, then I can click on it, just place tiles. So let's say I want this kind of shape here. And you can see in the bottom section here it says which tile I currently have highlighted. So we'll make... That one, our white tile, we know that's a zero, zero for reference. I'm also going to center this a little bit, so I'm going to use the move tool. So now let's make a script for this. Attach a script. Uh, we can call this tile map controller. And I'm going to hide this menu down here. So we want to make something in the input section. We can go ahead and just delete these other ones. We don't really need them. Alright, so we want to check for a mouse button event, so event is input event mouse, and we also want to check that they are left clicking, so if event button index. Okay, so now we can get the position in the overall game of this, so we can save that here. Now, to convert that to a cell in the tile grid, we can use this function here. So we'll save this to a variable. Pause clicked. Then we want to have a local to map. This is going to take a position and then convert it into the coordinates in the atlas. So we can just convert our global position here to be a local one. It's a built in function of a tile map. We can just say to local. Then we can provide that position. That was global clicked. Then if we want to print that out just to see that it works, we can do that. Pause clicked. And then we can run the game. Oops, just need to rename this here. So now when we run this, remember this spot was 0, 0. That's what's printed. And click these other ones too. And we get their coordinates. OK, so another main thing that we can do back in the 2D view Open up our tile set. We can make what's called alternates or alternatives. For this one, I'm going to make alternatives for my white tile. So I'm going to right click, say create an alternative tile. See that generated this one over here. Now I'm going to go to select mode. I have this one selected. In rendering, I can change the color. So we'll just make this cyan. Let's make it so that when I click on the white tile, it cycles between the different alts that it has. I'll make another alt. So again, change the color. Make this one pink. 
and sure we can add another one which is going to be yellow and for good measure we can also create an alt for the blue one so the way that the alt works it's a color that's being applied on top of what's already there so for example my alt for the blue one is here if i change that you have the cyan you can just see it makes it kind of a weirder blue color it's not actually cyan um a dark green color go back in the script all right so we want to have some constants here we're going to have the layer that we're working on you can see back in the tile set or tile map excuse me this is layer zero that we're working on you can add more layers that's kind of more if you want to have overlaid things but we won't get into that but for right now we're just going to use a layer zero so we'll make that a constant so that we don't have magic numbers in our program and you can see we also have down here this is the map we're reading from and it's id zero so if i added another text grid image that would probably be id one but again we don't want magic numbers so we'll have a variable for this as well so we'll just call this main atlas id so when i click on a white tile I want to know where in my atlas that is. So for example, if I click on this one, this point is 0, 0 in the grid. But when it's reading from the atlas, you can see here, it's atlas coordinates 2, 0. Let's check what the atlas coordinates are of the spot that they just clicked. Okay, so next, let's find out what the existing alt was that tile. So when I click a white tile, this is technically alt 0, but remember these are the alts that connect to the white one. This is alt 1, alt 2, and alt 3. So let's figure out what the alt is of the tile that we just clicked. Okay, and so now when we want to cycle through our blue one, we only want to go through this one. Or when we want to cycle through our white one, we have three. So we need to count how many alts there are. Okay, so now let's set the cell that we've just clicked on. So we use set cell. Alright, and so to increment, we're going to use our current tiles alt, then we want to add one to that, but then once we get to the last one, we don't want it to just go blank or crash or whatever, so we'll wrap this in parentheses, and we'll use the modulo, so this just gets us the remainder, so once it goes off the end, it just wraps back around, so in this case, that's why we call, or why we counted the number of alts. Let's test it out. So I click a white one, and it wraps back to white. And for blue, it goes to the greenish color. And for red, nothing happens when I click it, as expected, because we don't have any alt set up. That's the basics for how you can use the tile map and tile set in Godot 4. Thanks for watching.